Welcome back. Hope you got a chance to be with me yesterday in my Debo on Monday because this is a follow-up from that. Has to do with our time. In fact, I want to talk about your most important time decision today. I want to take you to uh, Ephesians, uh, a couple of verses there, chapter 5, verses 15 to 17. Be very careful then how you live, not as unwise, but as wise, making the most of every opportunity. One translation says, redeeming the time, because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be foolish, but understand what the Lord's will is. I want to make a couple observations on this verse. First of all, God cares about the use of our time. Be very careful then. Be wise. This passage links the use of our time with his will. So understand what the Lord's will is. He starts with, don't be foolish with your time, be wise with your time, understand what the Lord's will is. So there is a connection between our use of time and God's will. If you study this a little further, and this is one of those that it's a little harder to see on the surface, but the Bible wasn't written in our English. It was written in Aramaic and Greek, and the Greeks actually had two key words for time. It was kairos and kairos, or sorry, chronos and kairos. I'm going to say those wrong. Oh, let me do it one more time. Chronos and kairos. So chronos um, is quantitative. Kairos is qualitative. So quantitative has more to do with your watch, so more to do with seconds, where kairos has to do with moments, sometimes even seasons. So when Paul is talking about make the use of your time, he's saying basically make the use of the moment you're in, the, the opportunity you're in, the season you're in. It's a little less to do with the deadline and it has a lot more to do with the opportunity. Both are part of scripture. And so that's one of the other things I highlighted yesterday. God understands time. He created the world with time in mind, with days in mind, with uh, moments of time where things happened and prophecies that were scheduled at a particular time. So God's will involves both, but this just happens to be more about the moment, that we would seize the moment. So here's some applications, and here's the key one today. My greatest time management principle is a time stewardship principle. So am I managing my time, or am I stewarding God's? In other words, did God give me time to do whatever I want to with it, and I pray for his blessing then? Or is time also a gift, and I'm supposed to steward it, and it's his, and I manage it the way he wants? I believe scripture teaches the latter, that we actually should be time stewards. We, we manage our time based upon the fact that we believe God's given us um, enough time to do his will, but limited time. Not forever time, we're going to be with him forever, but our time here on earth is limited. And so, here's what I said yesterday, and I want to just underscore it again today. I believe in the goodness of God, so I believe that when God um, gives us responsibilities, he's going to give us the time and the power to do it. Think about how cruel it would be, those of you that are parents, how cruel it would be to give your, your young kids a responsibility, but neither give them the time nor the resources to do it so that you're basically guaranteeing your fail, their failure. That would be cruel. Well, so it would be with God, and God's not cruel. God's good. So he's not going to give you more responsibility without the time and power to be able to do it. But here's what I've come to understand. I believe um, the stresses of our mind are as much about the circumstances as they are about our mindset, maybe more so. In other words, at some point, um, a lot can be going on in our minds interpreting how much we have to do rather than there just be a lot to do. Um, I know that might be easy for me to say and you might think, well, you, you know, your life isn't my life and so you don't know, but I do know that we can tell ourselves a lot of things and we do all the time. And so if we tell ourselves we're constantly busy, if we tell ourselves we're overloaded, if we tell ourselves that we don't have enough time, I think we'll self-fulfill those prophecies. But if we, in fact, slow down, and I have found this to be helpful because I still get uptight at times, I still get wound up and thinking I'm overwhelmed, but if I will slow down and say what I told you, I have all the time and all the power to do everything God wants me to do, 
I can't begin to explain how valuable that's been to me. It has a calming effect. I sleep better. I rarely stay up late at night trying to get things done. I actually just believe in the productivity of God. So if I'm tired, it's probably better that I just get some sleep and I'll wake up refreshed. I'll be better prepared to be able to take the test, meet the demand, do whatever. But I don't just keep driving and driving. At some point, I truly believe this. God will give me time and resources to do what he wants. Now, one of my uh, chronos uh, deadlines is called a Sunday message. So for the best part of my life, I'll be the one on about 40 weekends out of the year. In other words, I will be responsible to write some version. It doesn't, hopefully it doesn't feel like a term paper to you. Hopefully it's a lot more inspiring and interesting than a term paper. But I, to put this in quantitative terms, it would be like writing 40 term papers a year for the rest of my life. If I let my mind interpret it that way. I would be overwhelmed right away thinking, I can't pull that off. Uh, you, you know, like I'm just going to run out of time. I'm going to run out of insight or whatever. But when I actually believe that God's given me all the time and resources, I actually look forward to what are you going to do this week? How are you going to help me this week, Lord? What insight are you going to rise to the surface that's exciting for me to find and see and apply even to my own life before I share it with anyone else? So um, I have learned to balance uh, Kronos, Kronos and Kairos, and the words that I use have to do with rhythm and routine. I do find routine to help me. My staff knows this, that the routine I need to have so that I have the moments that I need with God involve, for me, uh, Tuesday and Wednesday. My primary study time for the weekend is Tuesday and Wednesday. So I get into that rhythm I shut off my phone, I turn off my internet, basically. I basically don't make myself available on that day, on those days. But on the other days, I want to be in the moment. I want to be present. I want to be with people. So find what works for you. That was one of the tools God gave me. He actually helped me see that through a scripture. I'll just share it briefly with you. Acts chapter 6, um, this is verse 2. It says, The twelve summoned all the disciples and said, It's unacceptable for us to neglect the word of God in order to wait tables. Therefore, brothers, select among you uh, seven men, select among you seven men, confirmed to be full of the Holy Spirit and wisdom, and will appoint this responsibility to them, and we will devote ourselves to prayer and to the ministry of God's word. Now, that didn't mean that they quit being servant leaders. It just meant it was okay to delegate. It was okay to say that job is not my job, and I have to attend to this job. And so let's let these people be responsible for that while we're responsible for this. So I learned it's okay to have routine. It's okay to say no to some of the demands that are put on us and let other people pick up some of the responsibilities. So God helped me with that. God can help you. I don't know all the challenges you have, but here's what I've learned. Rather than tell God all the reasons it can't work, why don't you start with asking God for his help? on how he will make it work for you. You have all the time and all the power to do everything God wants you to do if you put him first. So let's pray about that one more time. Jesus, thank you again. You gave us time. We're here on this planet because you've given us time. I don't know how long all of us will be living, how long of life each one of us will enjoy, but every day is a gift. And there are going to be some moments in that day that are really, that need to be seized. And we don't want to be so task-driven that we miss the moments. We also don't want to have our, our heads so in the clouds that we don't have a certain routine. So help us balance these two as we put you first. You're the one that we're ultimately responsible for, too. And, and you will help us. We appeal to you. You see things we don't see. You know things we don't know. You have resources we don't have. So, Lord, we are yours. We surrender to you. And because of that, you're going to help us with all these details. And we're going to actually find that our pace of life is going to be more at ease because you're going to rest our minds. Many of us are going to sleep better because of this talk today. Many of us are going to make better decisions because we're even just going to learn to be tuned in to how you can lead and direct us all the way down to some of the moments of our lives and some of the minutes of our lives. I pray that in Jesus' name. Amen.